brothers and sisters, comrades and friends. I'm Cuba Libre. Welcome to the Croft Manor. Now this is hey, Lara. Hello, Zip. a kind of bonus level. Um, you can access it at any time from the main menu. And as you'll see, there's kinds of doors down to side hallways, and none of those are unlocked until you beat the first mission in the, of the normal game. Um, <clears throat> I thought I'd do an audio commentary here, um, since the main game is over, and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the game as a whole, and also why this sort of bonus exploratory level is easily the best level in the whole game. <laughs> which I didn't realize. I didn't even know, I didn't even click on it in the menu until after I beat the normal game. Um, the idea of the of the manor here is that uh, is much like in the rest of the game to collect these the dinguses. There's my first little dingus right there. Um, the difference is the following. There's no stupid plot. There's no pathos. And the level is just one big contiguous thing. Uh, no one gives you any hints. Um, hardly. There's no big glowy arrows telling you where to go. It's a non-linear exploratory large area that's interesting to look at and uh, fun to explore. And by the end of it, there's real puzzle solving to do. And uh, you just have to keep your eyes open for interactable objects and uh, manipulate them in certain ways. And another room is like her gym, which you'll see in a minute here. And in that, there's just different platforming elements all over the place. And um, there's multiple dinguses scattered around and you can go through the platforming elements in certain ways or different ways you don't need to do it in one specific way there's multiple solutions to at least some of them but what's important is that all these different paths overlap so it's not immediately obvious which one you need to go on to get which dingus you need to figure that out for yourself the more I play games, the more I realize that, and this isn't true for all games in all places, at all times, but generally speaking, my biggest reason, my biggest priority in playing a game, the thing I look for the most, the thing I like the most, is mystery. What I want is to figure things out for myself. And this isn't universally true. There are you know, games that aren't about figuring things out, they're about execution. And I like those games too, <clears throat> but generally not as much. I, I'm not a huge fighting game fan, I'm not a huge shooting fan, by which I mean, you know, shmups, scrolling shooters. I'm not a huge racing game fan. I'm not about execution as much. What I like is the intellectual process of figuring shit out. Now, of course, there's good ways to obfuscate and bad ways to obfuscate. Games are objects that you control, and in that sense, um, if you, if the manner of control is hidden from you, then that can be really frustrating. But if details about the world are hidden from you, then that's always tantalizing. Like, I want to know more. I want to figure out what's here. I want to explore, I want to poke in corners, I want to find mysteries, resolve mysteries, or at least investigate mysteries. And this is the only level in Tomb Raider Legend where that happens, which is, you know, as a game, again, as I've said throughout the Let's Play, about exploring ancient tombs, you'd think the archaeological aspect would be the main one. Like, what is this for? Almost like mist. Who made this? What is it for? How does it work? 
But in this game, that's almost never true. There's some fun. I enjoyed it. It was a fun game. There's some fun platforming. Um, you can see here, I figured that out. There's just those spears crossed on the floor. You'll figure out you can turn those statues. And you make the spears cross. That's just a nice little piece of visual design. It's even pretty obvious. It's not that amazing, but... And, uh, so... Um... As I was saying, uh, the main game is like a Half-Life 2 version of Tomb Raider. <laughs> uh, sort. Almost. And... I just... It's fun. I enjoyed it. But all the people saying it revitalized the series, I just don't... I don't buy it. This is what every level in a Tomb Raider game should be like. It should be like 10 levels like this manner right here that you're witnessing. That would just be a much better game. <clears throat> As for what's happening right now, um, I'm just poking around, seeing what there is to see. It seems obvious to me that I need a grapple. There's spears on the, this side of the room here that I'll have to use as poles, just like on the other side. But I don't have... But they're sort of into the wall, and they have that grapple gleam, so it's pretty obvious I need the grapple. But I don't have the grapple. It's another interesting thing about this level, is you start with no equipment, but eventually you find it all, which I didn't know right now. Actually, I was like, as I was playing, I was like, well, clearly I need a grapple. But I don't know... Maybe I just need to get more dinguses in the main game and it unlocks the grapple in the manner for you to use. I didn't know. Um, but you do need the grapple. <laughs> um, so here's that gym I was talking about. <laughs> Here's the bad controls. Anyways, uh -huh. And as you can see, there's just shit everywhere. Get that first, why not, right? Now, uh, as it happens, I figure out later, you're not supposed to, I don't think you're exactly supposed to be able to do that. That uh, the piece of rock it's on is too high to climb up to from the water, so you can't just dive in and jump up to it. But uh, there's definitely a way to climb around the walls, which I find, to drop down on top of that. <clears throat> but, um, instead you just jump across and barely make it. So, again, but that's cool. I mean, I, I like that. There's an intended way to get there, but you can use the physics, which is one of the interesting parts about this game that separates it from, like, Tomb Raider, the PS1 Tomb Raiders, that it has actual physics that can really alter the environment. They're not all purely scripted. But, um, so you can kind of abuse the length of her jump to get over there. And that was just some bullshit. Because <laughs> uh, it leads me to believe you can't grab onto that green stuff, even though obviously it looks like a little, it's like a rock climbing wall, it looks like a little ladder. You obviously can climb on it, which I discovered later. But right now I'm just trying out all my options. There's a few ways to start. And then once you get up, there are a few different ways to go. And I just want to see where they all lead. Imagine, I'm actually exploring the environment. <laughs> it's crazy, I know. At this point, I'm like, alright, clearly you can grab onto the green stuff. Yes, clearly. So obviously I just... I don't know, something went wrong. Um... Yeah, so the... Why can this only exist in Lara's gym? Like, it makes actually less sense for it to exist in Lara's gym. Why would Lara's gym have weird poles and shit hanging and just hanging everywhere for no particular reason? If anything, it would be the more artificial, laid out, linear environment. <clears throat> But no, instead it's the ancient crumbling tombs in natural locations that are linear. And it's Lara's, you know, explicitly set up, man-made, uh, not crumbling gym that is not linear. So I'm just going where the platforming takes me. 
as you can see, this is the way you can drop down to the silver thing that I already got. And there's no place else to go, actually. So Now you see these little gold gleamy things all over the place. Again, and there's a hinge on the left there. I was, even at the time, I was like, all right, so clearly I need a grapple and it'll pull out from the wall and it'll change the, uh, the grapple path. I'm mean, not the grapple path. It'll change the paths I have available to climb on. Which is awesome, you know, I, not only are there multiple ways to go, but I can willfully alter them in certain ways that close off paths and open new ones. And that's really compelling. Again, nothing like that in the main game. You have to use your grapple a lot, but it's always to just, there's no other way to go if you don't use the grapple, it's just required. You know, in the main game, if, if there is a grapple thing, you have to use it. It's like Mario Galaxy or something. It's more about knowing what you can do and less what you should do. I guess that's another way to put the mystery thing. I don't want the game to present me with a bunch of abilities. Represent in the world with particular markers when each of those abilities should be used. And then be designed such that every time I see the marker, I know I need to use the ability. It's just recognizing what you can do, and then doing it every time. What I want is for the game, for me to have to figure out what I should do. I want there to be red herrings, dead ends, things that I can do that don't help me. Then I have to choose among the available things to do in order to achieve my goals. No, I looks like I should obviously be able to grab onto that pole, but I can't for some reason. It's annoying. At any rate, <clears throat> what this kind of level design does, and here in the manor, is show me things that... Many things that I can do, and amongst which only some things that I should do. That's what's so compelling about it. There are a few bigger rooms in the main game where it seems like this is the case or where it is the case to a more minor degree, but nothing is this, uh... this, um... complex. There might be a couple red herrings, and that's it. I, but, oh, those are some of my favorite rooms in the game, and I comment on them in the Let's Play. Um... Now, there are problems. I mean, there are difficulties, sure, it's not easy. I'm not saying game designers are just lazy for not doing this. But, you know, I do expect them to work. I want it to be good. Uh, I've just cut out here. I've done this a few times. Cut out me wandering around unfruitfully. <laughs> um, still exploring. Figuring out what doors I can open, what doors I can't. So, I decide to head upstairs. In a minute. First there's a dingus. <laughs> Always with the dinguses. Now, uh, so one of the difficulties is in the main game, you want it to be... Um, sort of archaeological in the sense that you keep digging deeper. You want, to, you want it to be about pathfinding. I'm in this room, I want to get to the next room. Now this is sort of easier because it's just about picking up dinguses. These panels are very suspicious. There's a the panel just like that in between the two spear women that opened when uh, I put them in the right configuration. I figured um, that that is the same design and those have to be interactable at some point. So you'll probably see me go back to them a few times trying to figure out. Eventually I do figure it out. That's not till later. And here we go. There's a mechanism here. And voila. Her pistols. So this is when I realized, oh, you actually find your equipment in the manor. So there's got to be a grapple around here somewhere. <laughs> a 
finding it is uh, is another story, but I, I do eventually do that. Um, so yes, dinguses. It's easier to design these kind of overlapping paths. Red herrings. <laughs> um, when the point is just to pick up a little object. Because then you can make all the paths visible at once. Like you see in the gym. Oh. Lara's head turns towards that thing when you get near it. So, And it's very obvious as well. So it seems interactable. But... I don't figure out for a long time how exactly <laughs> it's interactable. And look, you can change your outfit. So I decide, why not put Lara in something a little bit more reasonable <laughs> instead of these horrific Barbie doll outfits. Something that she might actually wear. Although, you could still see her midriff peeking through. Oh, it's not a Laura, Cross, Laura Croft clothes outfit if uh, there's no midriff gotta see that belly or the hips anyways it's retarded but at least it's something more like what she would actually wear um, I don't know if the bulletproof tactical vest would be very comfortable doing uh, all the acrobatics but <laughs> considering how much she gets shot at by guys and now I have the guns of course so I'm gonna just use them on everything Still not being 100% sure if there's a grapple. I just shoot all the things <laughs> that I uh, have to grapple. <laughs> Wondering if maybe I have to shoot them instead. This is me figuring out, neither do I have my light or my binoculars. So, all of my equipment's gone. I wonder if I will find them. Pro tip, I will. So anyways, <clears throat> the dinguses can be all along the walls and the, the paths can visually overlap very obviously and you can see well like I, I need to go some way to get one dingus and to go some way to get another dingus um, and that's easy to see it's harder when uh, you're actually opening new paths um, because just for practical purposes um, you can't see them all at once Here's my light. You're not going outside, are you? Not when there are still so many interesting dark places inside. I decided, hey, can I shoot these guys? <laughs> the answer is, of course, no. Just bounces off him like he's made of stone. Although, in my opinion, that's the elegant solution anyway. Or at least, or even better would be to not ha allow her to shoot at all. It would be stupid if you could, uh, in a game like this, if you could just uh, kill the guys just because you can. Kind of freedom versus liberty thing. Lara would never shoot them, so it would be stupid to allow you, the player, to make Lara shoot them. Anyways, and you see these books in the bookcases, they're extremely obvious, but I can't do anything. The interact button doesn't work. I have guns the guns aren't working. I just got a light, so I decided to shine the light on them. I figure it's in the same room, maybe that's a hint, but no. Um, so yeah, if you're navigating a, a large 3D environment made of multiple rooms, you can't see them all at once. So if there's multiple paths to get there, it's harder to signify to the player what exactly they're supposed to be doing. I suppose there's no point in my offering to help you get what you need in a less calamitous manner. I didn't hear you offer in any manner at all, much less a calamitous one, but thanks all the same. Only as it needs to be. So it would be difficult to design interesting environments that have multiple paths and um, overlapping ones with some red herrings. But I would say the original Tomb Raider did this very well. Um, Are you sure those bullets won't bounce off that thing and put a premature end to my short and promising life? Hollow points, Alistair. They practically drop straight to the floor. 
I did promise no repeats of that earlier incident, didn't I? Ha 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 ha. I have no idea what these things do. Even though I should, looking at the video now. Lara keeps staring at interactable objects, but I'm not paying attention to her head, so... I will come back and figure this out later. Um... But yes, the original Tomb Raider did this quite well. Ultimately, there was only one way to go. Um, well, there were some hub-type areas where you need to complete like three or four puzzles and you could do them in whatever order you liked. Uh, but aside from that, there was just lots of red herrings and there were multiple paths, multiple ways to get to the one way you ultimately needed to go. It was a much more interesting game. All kinds of cliffs, like, you know, natural environment was like a natural environment. There were lots of cliffs you could climb around on that didn't go anywhere in particular. Um, it was just much more compelling in that, in that way. And that's one of the reasons Tomb Raider 1 is still the best one. Tomb Raider 2 is probably the second best one, and it is worse for all the reasons that Legend is worse. There's more emphasis on combat, which is never really the game's strength. Stalking another um, ex-girlfriend, are you? I prefer to think of myself as a guardian angel. That's really creepy. And I notice the big green blinking light. And I say, hey, a big green blinking light. And would you look at that? The grapple. So suddenly, many more paths are open to me. And I'm going to go explore them. Post haste. Um... As soon as I try and, and read his little sticky notes, <laughs> which ends up being unfruitful. Uh, so yeah, two meter two. See, I'm trying to still trying to play with that panel. Don't know what the deal is. This goes down, but I can't think of a single reason why you'd want to be able to uh, swing across, because you could just run across. But I'm sure it will be important later. Um, it had more combat and against shooting enemies, which is the problem. I say this briefly in my let's play. But, uh, you know, the auto-aim plus acrobatics really favors Lara fighting melee enemies, because you... The acrobatics is the interesting part. What you're trying to do is flip away from enemies who are coming at you. Um, the shooting is the boring part, because it's just all, totally automatic. So when you fight other enemies who can shoot with hitscan weapons, you don't really need to do acrobatics. You just kind of shoot at each other, since you both have auto-aim, and then eventually one person dies. Um, and that's boring. <laughs> so Tomb Raider 2 had a lot more of that. It took the environment thing to almost to an extreme, which was pretty cool, but again, each of the environments was a little more linear. The platforming itself was more complex, like what you needed to do was more complicated, and you really needed to um, utilize all of Laura's moveset. And that was really compelling. That's one of the good things about Tomb Raider 2. But, um... Ultimately, it just didn't have the same charm because... Because th the solutions were more linear, but also more complex, it made them seem really contrived. Like, this place was built just for Lara Croft to jump around on. It wasn't a... It's not a real place in any way. <coughs> So, um, at any rate, that's what makes Croft Manor the most interesting thing. We haven't even got to the really interesting thing yet, which I have no... This is me trying to pull... I'm thinking that uh, that ledge there is kind of a shelf that pulls out, but it isn't. It has a different use. Um, the most interesting part of all, I haven't even seen yet, and when I discover it, 
I really fall in love with this whole idea of the Croft Manor. Now, Two Meter One had a Croft Manor as well, and it was kind of cool for the same way. It just kind of existed. There was no danger there. It kind of existed independently. You could go to it whenever, or you could go to it in a. It was for training. It was kind of training mode, and there were little Easter eggs in it. Um, and it was interesting to explore in the same way. Now, whether or not there was actually anything ultimately interesting in the Tomb Raider 1 Croft Manor is beside the point. The point is that the game made me think there was. And that's fine. I want to be fooled. You know, things in video games aren't real. They don't exist. It's all one giant illusion anyway. So if you can fool me into thinking there's more in the game than there is, that's wonderful. The fooling just has to be of a believable, in a believable manner. I want to actually be fooled. I don't want to have to pretend to be fooled. I don't want to have to work to be fooled. I want to think there's a whole world beyond these walls. And then if I could, if I was just smart enough or good enough with the mechanics, I could get there. Now, you know, rationally, I'll know that that's not true, but that's not the point. The point is to evoke that feeling. And that's something that this level in particular, and the original Tomb Raider, does very well. And it's something that most modern games in the kind of, like, mainstream AAA mold have completely gone away from. Instead, they are ultra-linear experiences. They're like roller coasters that, you know, give you set pieces. I don't need to belabor this point. It's it's well-known point. But, um... To take a game like Tomb Raider, which was built on that older style... This is so annoying. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. You don't get your complete arc, you just kind of run into a invisible thing with your head. Which makes this jump, like, really stupidly annoying. I ended up, it took me a couple tries, but I ended up getting there. Look, and I hit it on the way back, too. There's nothing even to hit. It's really annoying. I don't know what that's about, but... <clears throat> um, another thing is that an environment like this encourages you to play with Lara's moveset. Lara's moveset's really fun. That's one of the cool things about Tomb Raider. As one of the first sort of real 3D platform games, it uh, attempted to develop a basically entirely new language of 3D navigation. And it did really well at it. And it was a really fun. Now, Legend, I think, is even an improvement. Tomb Raider had this kind of almost like a cinematic platformer. Oop, my laundry. Uh, like Prince of like a Prince of Persia, the original, not the 3D ones. Where every motion you made had a very specific length. The whole game was kind of laid out in tiles. And the tiles like everything that you could do was like laid out in the number of tiles so when you there was a walk move and the whole point of that move was to get exactly to the end of a tile so then your running jump would go x number of tiles and your standing jump would go x number of tiles and so forth so it was a much <coughs> a kind of sliced up the 3D space into lots of little discrete units to be navigated, which in a modern sense is kind of limiting, but it worked really well. And it allowed you, it, it put you in this mode of thinking in terms of the tiles, which allowed you to sort of look at a naturalistic looking environment and sort of decode it into you know, tile language, and you could see instantly, like, where you could navigate in the environment. 
But Legend, I think, is even more interesting, control-wise. Uh, it's, you know, there's true 3D controls. You can run in 180 degrees. There is just a standard length to the jump. Um, you can you can jump from any point on the uh, the tile you're on. It's not like you jump only from the very edge and get the same length every time. And that it's more granular, and that uh, that comes in with the physics as well. The physics are more granular. Um, <laughs> this is weird. It like won't let me get up anywhere. It's like one specific little place where I can. Ugh. Yeah. Uh, that links in with the physics because um, they are also granular. You can move the crates around. You know, you can rotate them at any angle you want. Push them one inch forward, one foot forward. Whatever. And um, that makes the game really interesting. There's a really interesting core here with the controls, the physics, the different acrobatic moves they give Lara, the way she can navigate, but they just don't really use them to their full potential. They try, there's interesting ideas. They do some things with the weight. Uh, you know, there's like that seesaw thing, there's the scale puzzle. was a stupid miss jump. <laughs> Not even my fault. Yeah, one problem with the granularity, of course, is that sometimes shit just doesn't work the way it's supposed to, and it's kind of frustrating, but... It's something I'm willing to... to deal with for the advantages of it, but... At any rate. So that's it for the gym. Um... That's every dingus, I think. It turns out by the end that I have missed one silver dingus somewhere. And I don't have any clue where it was. I don't care. <laughs> but, uh... Very thorough. That's another good point. It's not like I didn't try to find all the hidden dinguses in the main levels. It just sort of seemed pointless. I would, you know, poke around... But they didn't really interest me enough to to make me sit and really look around for all the different uh, for all the different secrets. Now maybe that's my fault, but the li the levels are otherwise so linear that they kind of discourage you from exploration. You're like, well, I know there's probably a dingus around here somewhere, and there's maybe some way to get it, but. The way you're supposed to go is so obvious, and the game is so kind of, like, set-piece driven that you're... Nah, screw it. <laughs> but when you give the player a large, interesting environment like the manor here, you get motivated. <laughs> watch your watch your fingers there, Lara. Uh, you get motivated to explore around and find all the hidden stuff. Partially because that's all there is to do. But... Um, Yeah, that's not a that's not an accident. This is me just trying to see where I'm supposed to go. I decide that well, there's probably a grapple thingy on the ceiling because it's too far to the next spear to jump. And lo and behold, there is. And now the statue's getting in the way. Which is cool, that's one of the cool things about this game. It, uh... You know, that, uh... I'm actually physically swinging. It's not a scripted event, so if there's an object in the way that I put there, it will I will stop myself. That kind of interactability is really valuable. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, I got my binoculars. So I decide to just, you know, try.
try out the magic binoculars oh, on everything. Now that's pretty cool. Even though I know I can interact with all this it stuff already. To rearrange the furniture. Just out of curiosity. See if I see anything that I haven't seen before. It's not very helpful in this instance. Nope. Can't make that jump. I pretty much knew I couldn't, but, you know, might as well try. But I got the idea. If I could swing in the middle here... Oh, first there's a silver one that I missed. I forgot about it. It's behind this statue. You can see it when you climb up on the other side, but... I had forgotten about it in the intervening time. So I... but if I... Since the swinging isn't just a scripted thing, you can control it. Why don't I just change the angle of my swing and go towards the thing? Genius. And that's really cool. I thought that was a really interesting piece of level design. Now, unfortunately... <laughs> As you can see, there's a weird block where before you get to the end of your swing, it automatically cuts off your rope and you just fall without an opportunity to jump. Which is weird. Again, it's it's just like the invisible thing that kept me from jumping in the in the gym room. But anyways, if you can anticipate it, you can jump early and still make it to the edge of the whatever that is. Plant chandelier. Plant delir. Something. So that's it, as far as I can tell, so far, for the pool room. Now it's time to head back up to the library and see if I can't uh, use my new tools to some effect. Here, one of the one of the few times that when I play in this game, see, I'm trying to look at the books where the binoculars actually are That's useful. A mechanism. Now that opens, but how? Probably something to do with the books, I assume. But again, the books don't seem to be interactable. That's a mechanism. But what I do see is those little plates glowing. I'm like, oh wow. What a remarkable contraption! Now it becomes obvious there's two of them. I need to put the things on the plates. The pressure plates. Now, yeah, I just missed them before because I don't know why. Sometimes you just miss stuff, I guess. But now it's clear what I must do. Your enthusiasm truly inspires me, Lara. Don't be sarcastic, Alistair. It's dishonest. <laughs> I fucking hate the fucking rotation pushing controls. They're so... If you're just watching the video, you don't get it. But they feel so weird and it's so hard to get the, the angle that you want. Ugh! Winston to install a handle for you, but he didn't even offer the courtesy of a reply. He probably thought it was a rhetorical question. I would have. <laughs> now we finally realize why the light is in this room, because the secret door opens to a dark place. Switch. It's 
another one of those croft circle things. And it moves. But first there's crates. If I see crates, I have to shoot them. That's just how it is. Let's see what this is. Above the waters, twin sisters turn their backs, one upon the other, to leave their umbrages unguarded. Lovely. Now all of a sudden, this level easily becomes my favorite level. I'm like, oh my god, I found a secret area with a secret switch that opened a panel with a riddle on it. And now you can see what that does. It's the way. <laughs> it's a secret tunnel between the library and Lara's bedroom. Um, suddenly I'm enthralled. Of course I know what I have to do. The two sisters above the water face away from each other. But that's it's just amazing to me. It's almost a detective game now. It's like mist or something. and oh, It's just so much more interesting. Oops, wrong way. <laughs> um, yeah, I just fell in love with this level when I saw that. I had no idea it was coming, that there would be some kind of a... Look at that. Reusing an old solution to Within a new, the of knowledge, more hidden cerulean, solution. Topaz, Viridian, and Crimson in turn reveal their arcana. Splendid. So that's blue, yellow, green, red, and suddenly... So now I know. Oh, those are the books in the Hall of Knowledge. So, we head back to the library. And now the books are magically interactable. Now that is kind of a problem. Like, they should always be interactable, and you should only need the clue if... I mean, the clue should help you solve the puzzle, but you should be able to stumble onto it, I think, ideally. But... But now I'm a detective. I'm solving a hidden problem that ranges across the whole manor and it uses my knowledge of the manor which I have gained by getting the lesser finding the lesser dinguses and looking at everything in order to solve a large overarching puzzle and it, it's so cool it's not even that complex above the hearth revealed visage and countenance touched in haste raise up the steward oh, fun It's not even that complex, but it's so much more interesting and mysterious and profound than anything else in the game. The whole damn game should just be like this. It would have been amazing. But alas, all we have is the manor. <laughs> so countenance and visage above the hearth seems to me to describe the painting of Lars' parents above the hearth. So I just try everything I can think of. Every tool I have. Maybe it means the tiger faces. You know, countenance and visage both being sort of synonyms for face, if you don't know what that means. Faces. try and grapple it. Grappling doesn't work. I try and climb around up there. That doesn't work. Well, I futz around for quite a long time <clears throat> trying to figure out what it means. But as I'm looking around, I suddenly look up and see in the corners that those C, those croft panels, have now become the tongue switch type panels. So it's a little disingenuous. They're not really above the hearth. And suddenly I realize what this is for. I know... Just because th these poles exist, that it's timed. You have to, you know, hit one and then hit the, the other quickly. The Athena turns to face the sun, whose burden then reveals her golden laurel. There. Burden reveals golden laurel. That's my gold dingus. So anyways, I knew it had to be timed because otherwise there'd be no reason to have to swing across. You could just run around the other side. But that would otherwise be too close. So again, faces the sun, there's a, there's a big window. It's not that complicated, but it's just so much more interesting than running around scripted events and shooting PMCs. <laughs> I 
There it is. My golden laurel. So, I'm still missing one silver dingus. But, uh... I think I pretty thoroughly searched this place. And I had a lot of fun doing it. So there you go. There's Croft Manor. And there's my opinions about this game. And what it could have been. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching the Let's Play as much as I liked making it. Uh, more is coming. I'm going to do a, a blind Let's Play of the shitty new Medal of Honor game. And probably some more Tomb Raider. So uh, stay tuned. I'm Cuba Libre signing off. See you next mission. Peace out, guys.